Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel Bytes blog post. Today we're going to take a quick look at five different ways to create a list in your data validation drop down list. So let's see how we can do those in Excel. So here's our scenario. I have five different examples of data validation drop down lists and each one of them just has the 12 months of the year. So I'm showing the same list for each one of my data validation dropdowns. So let's see the five ways that we can create that dropdown list. The first one is just manually typing in the entries. So if I select that and go to data, data validation, you'll see that all I've done is type in the 12 months of the year. They're separated by a comma. There's no need to put spaces in between. And this is really great if you have just a couple like true, false, yes, no, yes, maybe, no, etc. Instead of creating a general list or having that data elsewhere on your workbook, you can just manually type them into a list. So that's the first way, and that's the simplest for a small list. The second way here is if you have your list already typed out somewhere, like here, you can just reference that. So if I select this one and go to data, data validation, you can see my source is equals D2 to D13. So again, all I needed to do was type equals, select this list, say OK, and now I have a data validation drop-down list with that list of values, in this case, the 12 months. The third option is if you have your list already typed somewhere is to name that range and use that name in your data validation drop-down list. So for example, here, if I go to data validation, you can see it says equal months. And if I click my name box drop down list and select months, you can see this range from F2 to F13 is named as months. And to do that, all you need to do is highlight that range, then type the name up here, and that becomes the name of that range. And then you can just, in your data validation drop down list, put equals the name of that range and it will populate with that list accordingly. The last two methods have to do with if your list is included within a table. So here I have a table, and if we look at table design, the table name is all months. So the table is called all months, and the header for that table is called months. So if we select this cell here and go to data, data validation, you'll see what I had to do here was type in a formula using the indirect function. So equal indirect, and then in quotes, I had a list of table name, all months, and then in square brackets, the column header name. In this case, there's only one column, but it's called months. That in double quotes in the indirect formula, and now that provides the list within my data validation dropdown. The benefit of using tables is it's dynamic. If I removed values, or let's say we add another month to the calendar and call it Mike, now in my data validation dropdown list, I have that addition to it. If I wanted to delete that, I can just delete that, shorten my table back to its original size, and now my data validation drop-down list only goes down through December. So that's the benefit of having your list in a table. Again, all we needed to do was use the indirect function, and then in parentheses, with double quotes, put the table name, and then in square brackets, the column header name, and now you have your list there. The last way is also using a table, and again, you get the benefits of that dynamic range, but what we did is we went to the formula tab and in name manager we created a new named range and I'll just click edit here and I called it month table and in month table I just typed equals and then again the table name 
and the header name in square brackets. I didn't need to use the indirect formula. I can just type equals table name and then column name and then name that, in this case, month table. So then, if we look at the data validation drop-down list here, you'll see all I did for my source was say equal month table was the name that I gave to that formula. In this case, equals all months months. And now I didn't need to use the indirect formula here, and it will again populate the data in my data validation drop-down list and give me the benefits of being dynamic whether I expand or reduce the size of that table. And that's how you can do this in Excel. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so at my website, excel-bytes.com or at any of the social networks noted below. Thanks a lot, have a great day, and happy Excelling.